I'm going to show a real basic procedure here. This is going to be an amalgam patch job under an existing full gold crown. As you can see, if there's some pretty deep decay on the distal buckle, uh, the mesial margin is failing. Um, so we just need to go ahead and get this cleaned out, and then I'm going to go ahead and patch it with amalgam. I think amalgam is a great restoration to use in this type of a situation. So what I'm using is a number two round burr, and you might notice that I'm using no irrigation. And one of the reason it, reasons is this is a difficult area to see. Um, you know, it's right in the patient's throat, so they're going to constantly need to close and, and get the water out. And one thing about using a really small burr, uh, and if you don't put a lot of pressure and if you don't do too much at once, is that you can get away without using irrigation uh, without overheating the tooth. So you'll notice I'm doing a really light touch, just really quick uh, in and out movements. Um, we're taking away a little bit of the crown uh, where the decay is extending up underneath that crown. Um, and being full gold, that preps away very easily. Uh, but as long as you are just using that really light motion and you're not trying to do too much at once, then it works very well actually to uh, do these dry. I wouldn't want to do a, a full crown prep or a, a typical class two preparation this way, uh, but something like this, it works well. And now what I've done, I've actually, I'm using an electric handpiece here and I've turned the speed down from 20,000 RPMs down to 5,000 RPMs without switching my handpiece attachment. And that allows me to use this more like a slow speed attachment. Um, so I'll get the bulk of it out um, with the high speed and then I'll just turn down the dial and make this uh, function more like a low speed to do any uh, final carries removal. So trying to get all that out of the distal area and as you can see everything's starting to look much cleaner now. Uh, you do have to be careful. You can see that one little area where the burr got away from me and rolled up on the, the margin of the crown. Uh, that won't affect this in any way, but generally you would like to try and avoid that if possible. So I think I've got it all out. I'm applying some carries dye here. And so this just goes on and quickly gets washed away by the assistant. And then we'll take a look and make sure that everything looks like it's fully cleaned out. And so as you see here, there's still a little bit of area staining on that distal buckle. Um, where it's a little bit discolored and so I do want to just go back and get that little bit off. So again with the slow um, the slow handpiece speed I'm coming in and we'll just wipe that away really quickly. And it may be difficult to tell, but I'm also, uh, when I'm doing this, I'm creating a little bit of retention in the tooth. Uh, it is amalgam. It does have to be mechanically retained. And so there's the slightest bit of an undercut with the edge of the tooth there and up underneath the crown. And that's going to mechanically retain this. And then finally coming back and uh, just the very last bit of decay I'm getting in the deepest portion with an excavating spoon. So you'll notice that the gingiva is bleeding slightly there and it's somewhat deep underneath the tissue as well. And so before I go filling this tooth, I would like to get that taken care of and get good access. So here I'm coming in with the diode laser. Uh, this is the Picasso light and I'm just using it at about 1.1 watts here. And as I'm doing that, I'm still seeing a little bit more charring than I would like. Um, in general, I want that to just kind of melt away tissue where you don't see a lot of charring. And so I'm experimenting with settings here, uh, trying to lower that down a little bit. Still seeing a little bit of charring, so I think I finally ended up at 0.8 watts. And that seemed to be a good setting to um, eliminate the uh, charring that I was seeing. So the goal is not to vertically lower the tissue to where I get a 100% clear view. It's just unnecessary really in this case. Um, but what I am doing is I'm creating a little uh, depth to the sulcus where I'll be able to get in there with an instrument and uh, clean up any excess. And I'm also getting a little horizontal displacement between the, uh, the tooth and the gum so that I can, um, first of all, eliminate the bleeding. And second of all, uh, just be able to pack things in there uh, cleanly and be able to clean them up and uh, carve the amalgam back. So here we come with the amalgam and uh, the, the head of this amalgam carrier is really a little bigger than would have been ideal. 
Uh, if you've got a smaller one, I would generally suggest using that uh, in a small restoration, or I'm sorry, a small preparation like this. Uh, but it got the job done, so I'm just using a really small condenser to pack it up under the crown margin, down into the undercut on the apical portion. So condense this really well, and you'll notice I don't have any um, any bleeding or oozing, saliva, anything like that getting on the amalgam. Uh, so this is going to contribute to a lot better seal with the amalgam restoration. As I start getting uh, bigger portions uh, of amalgam and start getting toward the outside of the restoration, I'll actually use um, the side of my condenser so that I get more surface area. And so this allows me to pack it in without gouging down into the amalgam itself. And uh, we're just trying to condense this really nicely, get it slightly overfilled, uh, make sure it's in every little nook and cranny of this cavity preparation. And finally, coming back with one final increment. Again, we're already completely filled, but I do want to overfill this just to make sure there's no voids or any um, areas that I've left out. So really condense this well. And again, the side of your um, uh, condenser works well for this to keep you from um, you know, digging into this. So we'll get this overpacked. Really try to drive it into the mesial there. And then once I do that, you can actually use the, uh, the side of the uh, packer to go ahead and start burnishing this in and removing some of the bulk of the material. So you'll see I'm burnishing this now. Um, that's going to allow me to not have so much bulk of material when I come back in now with the interproximal carver. So my assistant's going to come in and have the evacuator right beside this tooth. We want to avoid uh, letting any chips fall to the back of the patient's throat. Uh, we don't want to aspirate those or have them swallow them. So assistant's going to be right beside this as I carve it. And this is an interproximal carver. And so what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that the tip is right on natural tooth structure. And I'm going to just make some sweeping motions to eliminate any overhanging margins and uh, clear this up. Make sure that we've got a good smooth transition from the amalgam down to the tooth root. And periodically your assistant can rinse this out. That's generally helpful to get any of those chips out. And now I'm switching to an explorer. So I find the explorer to be a great instrument for doing any final burnishing in of the margins uh, for the transition from uh, amalgam to tooth and amalgam to the crown in this case. So just burnishing in here, you can see I'm still getting a little bit um, uh, off where there was overhanging amalgam. And so you can get an extremely uh, close fit. I mean, you're going to get a, a closer marginal adaptation with amalgam in this scenario than you would ever get with any kind of direct restoration. And so I don't necessarily think that it's uh, any better here to replace the, the gold crown. In fact, when you can keep the restoration small like this, I, I would almost be inclined to say this might be a better uh, option to help the patient avoid having to replace this and knowing that we've got good marginal adaptation everywhere under this subgingival restoration. All right, so this is looking good. We've got our final uh, burnishing done. Um, there's no overhangs on the amalgam. And if we just look here with a close-up view, you can see that um, everything is looking really smooth in transition. If you want at this point, you could take a wet cotton pellet and uh, do some final burnishing of this amalgam. I'm going to do some final with just the uh, Explorer tip and make sure that I didn't leave any possible pieces down there. Um, and then usually I'll just come back after, uh, after this is set a little bit more and smooth it with my finger or a cotton uh, pellet, a wet cotton pellet, and both of those tend to burnish this up really nicely. Uh, but that should complete the restoration. Uh, pretty quick job. Um, so hope that was helpful to you if you're doing any amalgam patch jobs.